It's the Dog Dads bringing you the Barkology Dog News, where you go to hear the hottest dog news out there. The news, hype, research, tales, health, events, science, diet, friends. It's the Barkology News. What are you doing? I'm trying to get my voice right, son. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Are we good to go? We are. <clears throat> ah! What's up, dog pack? We back again. This is a news episode. So we're bringing you the latest, the newest, the freshest news in the world when it comes to dogs. Telling you what you want to know, not what you need to know. <laughs> yeah. if you... Spoken by Ron Jeremy. <laughs> I mean, not Ron Jeremy. <laughs> Ron Jeremy. See where my head's at. <laughs> Ron Burgundy. Burgundy. Yeah, anchor man, not Ron Jeremy. I think I have to name my child Ron. There's a lot of great Rons. Ronald? Yeah. Ronnie Ron? Ron Swanson. Ron Swanson. Ronnie from Jersey Shore. <laughs> Pea brain yeah. Ronnie. Ronnie Juice. Oh, Ron Ron Juice. Yeah. All right. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, follow us as usual at Barkology Podcast on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, we have the new 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 dog pack mini vlogs on youtube check them out it's basically uh, behind the scenes what we're doing on a day-to-day basis subscribe like us there uh do us a favor we'd love that but today we're gonna get into the news so greg do you want to start us off you want me to start us Ooh. off i got some good stuff well over after here. you say it like that you have to go first some good stuff don't don't <clears throat> don't do that all right, so uh, the first story that I'm going to bring up is actually, it, you know, one of the very, very first podcasts we ever did was we interviewed, um, and his name is slipping my mind right now, I, I feel bad, but he literally, mm-hmm. um, he's basically a reporter for the Iditarod out in Alaska. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and what was his name? Uh, it's slipping my mind. Either God, way, you should prepare better, Scott. This is relatable because the title of this story is Two Months Later, the Iditarod Champion May Finally Get a Ride Home. So mm. I don't know if that means the human who's, you know, working the sled. <laughs> Not much of a dog story. Or if, you, uh... or if it's one of the dogs who was a part of the sled dog pack. So, <clears throat> so uh, to start off, because of the coronavirus pandemic, Thomas Werner of norway so he he's definitely of like he he's norwegian descent he's sure. he's above the arctic circle possibly i sure. think part of norway is uh so it was part of alaska so he fits in nice and his dogs have been stranded in alaska after finishing the ra- race on march 18th okay so he's been there for about a month and a half mm-hmm. he's been stranded for about a month and a half why because of the coronavirus pandemic. He oh, even think about it. I didn't even think about that. You know what? They say the longest flight <clears throat> possible, the longest commercial flight is from New York City to um, uh, in the Philippines, in the Philippines, one of the. So it, basically, you go over the North Pole and come around the underside of the Earth. Hmm. Interesting, right? So Wait. I've got to imagine Alaska is Alaska to Norway is probably the same distance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no game. <gauge. laughs> so Thomas Werner was contending for the lead in the Iditarod sled dog race in mid March. Yet, as he focused on the race and his dogs, he couldn't help pick up the whispers at rest stops. Coronavirus, COVID nineteen, flights canceled, borders closed. Shit, man. Imagine mm. how do you focus in mid race? Like every stop, you're like, you're like, I'm literally gonna pass out and die. I need to feed my dogs. I sleep for a couple hours. Get back up mm-hmm. and do the race. But you're like. I may not be able to go home. You hmm. know, it's pretty crazy. So uh, when Warner, he's 47 years old, crossed the finish line in first place. So he fucking killed it. Frickin oh. killed it <laughs> on March 18th, winning the race in his only a second try. He celebrated, but he also confronted the stark reality in a world much changed since the ceremonial start of the race 11 days before. That's crazy, though. You know, Coronavirus. And what we heard from the news and what was reported to us in 11 days should change quick. Imagine that's literally like eleven days. It could be insane, and who knows? I don't know if I'm following Scott. How How are you not following? I don't know. Be more descriptive. So uh, basically, (laughs) (laughs) how do you want me to fix that? It it couldn't have been more clear. Uh, He he knew that he and his dogs might not be able to get back to Norway, and who knows what Norway's regulations were like. I have no I have, idea. I, I'm not there, Switzerland. Scott. I mean, we know Switzerland kind of just like let things Are go. Are you Norwegian? Rampant. I'm not Norwegian. Oh. 
I, I have a little bit of Baltic states inside me. Yeah, That's like Latvia and those weird places. Ugh. Like Northern Europe, like just a little bit east of. So, yeah. Is that good or bad? I think it's good. I think it gives me some back strength. <laughs> <laughs> Got some good back straps on this guy. <laughs> yeah, we did a lot of rowing. We did a lot of rowing and ship, shipping back in the day. So uh, when Warner 47, oh, wait, I just read that. So sure enough, more than two months later, Warner and the 16 sled dogs are still residents of Alaska because he has no choice. In quotes, I had a feeling, <laughs> in quotes, when I had a feeling when we were still at the Yukon River, you get messages. He said on Monday, his wife, Goro, it's almost like Goro from Mortal Kombat, who was expecting to meet him at the finish line, decided to fly back to Norway a few days before the race ended. She probably had an inkling that shit was going to go crazy. Hmm. Still, Warner refused to be alarmed while on the course. In quotes, in a long distance race, you don't worry about what's uh, going to be around the next corner, he said. I didn't think about that. So he's like, you know, short term, we just got to focus on each step or each dog step or each sled step in front of us. We can't worry about the long term stuff. So he's like, I didn't think about what was going to happen when we got back. Yeah, you're there to win, dude. Uh, But because of the flight cancellations, especially for cargo planes and border security rules, he soon realized I can get home, but I can't get home with my dogs and I won't leave them. Oh, yeah. What a boss, man. The ship's going down. You're sinking with it. Yeah, dude. That's awesome, though. That just got me pumped up. I'm I'm the captain. (laughs) I'm the captain. I'm I'm the captain. Somalian pirates. (laughs) Completely different. (laughs) Over the past two months. That's a different uh, story. Yeah. Captain Phillips. For another time. Captain Phillips. Phil Hubs, over the past two months, he has lived with his friends, taken his dogs for walks, and tried to figure out some way, any way to get out of Alaska. The dogs, though, are not at all bothered by being stranded in the wrong hemisphere. They're fine. They're like, hey, yeah, we're, they're like, hey we're here now. You're like, you're, you're the man. We're doing whatever you want to do. <laughs> He's like just like feeding them shit, like going for little sled yeah, cruises. Yeah, cool, cool. Uh, in quotes, dogs are a lot better than humans to live in the moment. Truth. W- w- Warner said, yeah, they live in the moment, every moment. Uh, they like to train. Do you we, think your dog ever thinks like, hey, what are we going to do tomorrow? No. <laughs> He's like, you put your hand on my head right now or I'm going to fucking piss in the corner. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm going to poop in your shoe. <laughs> One of my mom's dogs did that, actually. Literally? Growing up, like, yeah. Stereotypical. You get like pissed it and just poop in their shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, dude. It's like, mm, take that. Mm. Uh, they like to the train. We go walking. They enjoy it, he said. <laughs> At home in Norway, Goro, it's Goro, but I like Goro, forearm beast from Mortal Kombat, a vegetarian. Is taking care of three tr- children younger than 10 and another 35 dogs. So they have a total 35 plus, plus 16. Do it real quick. 51. Um, <clears throat> she's been doing an incredible job, he said. I've got lazy, easy life. I'm a person with a lot of energy. I had to slow down a lot. So he's like, I'm stranded in Alaska. I have my dogs. We can go for walks. We can do this stuff. But I'm getting fucking like cooped up. Like stir crazy. Stir crazy, man. Cabin fever. As is everybody, everybody else. else in the whole you got to imagine, though. Deal like, with it, dude. <laughs> yeah, everybody else is doing the same thing. But even more so out in Alaska, there's nothing. You're like, mm, let me go get some seal blubber and light a lantern. <laughs> like, what do you do? All right, I don't know, so, man. That lazy have you ever been to Alaska? I haven't. I, I know. have. It's pretty nice. I, I don't know. We've I recommend it. I, I would love to go. Okay. Preferably during Robert the summer Robert Forto, by the way. Forto. Robert Forto. Forto. Dog Works Radio. Check him out. Yep. Check him out. He uh, does a lot of reporting on the Iditarod. He's the man. Real good guy. Very, very approachable for living out in the middle of nowhere in Alaska. So, And he wants us to come on his podcast. <laughs> he, he, dude, he gets he gets millions of downloads about the Iditarod coverage. So we need oh, to hop, yeah. He's like the man, game. dude. He's the man. Um, all right, so that lazy, easy life Can might have continued indefinitely name. had not an off-the-wall solution emerged. Werner heard of an aerospace museum in Norway that hoped to obtain an old plane from an air cargo company based in Alaska. Interesting. <clears throat> but those planes went awry. Those plans went awry, in part because virus-related upheavals had caused a steep fall in the value of Norwegian currency. Ooh. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah, it's like, ooh, good. Mm. Norway. I don't, what do you think Norwegian currency is? What is it called? Uh, Nor- Nor- Norwallers? <laughs> the Norwegian dollar. Wow. Who knows? Um, I just called the museum and said, maybe we can work something out, Werner said. With help from his sponsors... He was able to book passage for himself and his dogs in the 1950s airplane. The hope is to take off June 2nd. <clears throat> so this was about 
this was uh, written about two weeks ago. So hopefully now that it's the 30th of May, he's a couple days out. So I think hopefully he's good. Let's cross our fingers. Yeah, right. The flight will stop twice in Canada and Yellowknife of the Northwest Territories on the Baffin Island in Nunavut wherever that is, and possibly in Reykjavik, Iceland. Before arriving in Norway, reported Technisk Ukebeld, a Norwegian engineering magazine. Well, those were some struggle words, but it looks like he's going to make a couple stops on the way back. I think it's going to be an adventure, Warner said. Uh, it's not going to be a luxury trip. It's a cool story. It's a great ending to the race because he came in first. He didn't say this. He's not bragging, but he fucking killed it. Freaking killed it. There was one episode I did alone where I tried not to swear the whole time. I just kept saying Fri- fucking freaking fucking freaking <laughs> the whole time. Um, I might just the swear long- a couple more times. <laughs> Sorry. Idiot. Uh, might the long flight and potentially rough ride bother the dogs? Question mark. Hardly, Warner said. The dogs are so balanced, he said. When you put them in the boxes, they just sleep. And that's the end. So hmm. hopefully he gets home safe, baby. I hope they. Uh, I hope they make it. They got a couple of days. If they already didn't leave, hopefully, hopefully they get home by June second. Yeah. I mean, what do you think it's like getting a couple of dogs through uh, airport security? A couple? You mean sixteen? Yeah. No, he had like fifty. He said. The, his wife had thirty six more in addition to the sixteen, something like that. In Alaska. No, or she had another back 36 home. back in Norway. Well, she didn't have them. Well, she's she has keep... babies. She's a person. Yeah, but she didn't, she didn't birth them. You're oh, right. Oh, okay. But yeah, so he's trying to... You need to speak more though. clearly because when you say things, you make it sound like people are having dogs as babies. I'm reading words. You look like Tom Green. It's disgusting. Do it's I distracting, know? too. Oh, yeah. So if you guys aren't watching, check out the videos on YouTube. Um, we're putting up each episode on YouTube from now on. But I just shaved my thick beard because it was 80s, 90s, and 100% humidity in New York the past couple days. Itchy. Couldn't handle the beard, so I shaved it down to a goatee. I look like Tom Green or um, maybe American History X. Like yeah, where you curb- don't want to look like that right yeah, now, Yeah, where he's curb stomping people because he's racist. I don't know if you've uh, seen I'm the not- news lately, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> I am not racist. Not the look you want to go for. Um all right, well, that's the end of that one, man. So what else is up on right. the docket? For I dog don't news? really know if this is a news story, but it's a really good factual piece of writing. Sweet. All right, so fearfulness is one of the most common behavioral disorders in dogs. As an emotion, fear is a normal and vital reaction to help individuals survive in threatening circumstances. Mm-hmm. When the fearfulness is excessive and disturbs the dog's life, it is referred to as a behavioral problem. That makes sense. I yep. mean, think about it. If you're like, if you're literally fearful of being afraid of something, mm-hmm. if you're a human, yeah. it becomes an anxious thought. So you're going to be diagnosed with some sort of anxiety mm-hmm. similar to what you just said. So excessive fearfulness can significantly impair the dog's welfare. And it is also known to weaken the relationship between dog and owner. So social fearfulness in dogs is particularly associated with the fearfulness related to unfamiliar human beings and dogs at the university of Helsinki Helsinki. Okay. Risk factors predisposing dogs to social fearfulness were investigated with the help of data set per data set data sets pertaining to nearly 6,000 dogs. So they oh, did wow. their research people a lot they of dogs That's did a, a little bit more than putting glue on a bee. Yep. All right. The data set, <laughs> Um, was selected from a, a large set of data, a behavioral survey encompassing almost 14,000 dogs. So based on the, sur- the survey, inadequate so- social socialization of puppies to various situations and stimuli had the strongest link to social fearfulness. That makes sense. I mean, yeah, just come it. to my neighborhood and look at all of the dogs that have never been on a walk. Yeah, looking out oh, windows, just like crazy as shit. Yep. Anyways, yeah. the living environment also appears to make a difference as dogs that live in urban environments were observed to be more fearful than dogs living in rural environments. Hmm. Hmm. There's a lot more going on. I mean, if you're a dog living in, you know, the country, you yep. don't see as much, but you're probably exposed yep. to more yep. percentage wise. All right. This has not actually been previously investigated in dogs. What we do know is that human mental health problems occur more frequently in the city than they do rural areas. However, further studies are needed before any more can be said about case causes pertaining to the living environment, says Jenny Perunen. 
I mean, you can take a she lot. She's got two U's. P-U-U-R. Perunin. 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 Yes. Yeah, like a, <laughs> a postdoctoral researcher at the Facility of Veterinary Medicine, University of Helsinki. 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 I wish I could see it's a, I, It yeah. sounds right. It sounds cool. Yeah. I like that. All right. So supporting prior research evidence, social fearfulness was demonstrated to be the more common among neutered females and small dogs. Huh? Neutered females. I have one of those. It's my dog. (laughs) You're neutered. Okay, cool. Uh, Alongside alongside size and gender, activity is almost uh, another factor associated with fearfulness. Fearful dogs were less active than bolder ones and their owners also involve them in training and other activities significantly less often professor haynes lohi from the university of helsinki speculates whether this is cause or consequence did we did we figure out where helsinki is i don't know but we should have these people on the podcast helsinki all right let me i'm gonna look up helsinki take a guess real quick um somewhere in japan no, no way, dude. That is Wyoming. Helsinki. Finland. Ah, that was close. Finland. <laughs> All right. Uh, activity and stimuli have been found to have a positive effect on behavior in both dogs and humans. <laughs> of course, the less activity of fearful dogs can also be down to their owners wanting to avoid exposure Exposing their dogs to stressful situations. All right. So, yeah, if you don't expose your dog to stressful situations, they turn out fearful. All right. It may be that people just are not as active with fearful dogs. Lohi points out. Ooh, so it's like you have uh, to, you have to chicken emer- or egg. Yeah, you have to emerge them into it, though. You have to emerge them into a stressful situation. Right. So it becomes a little bit more comfortable yeah. if you... It's like breaking in a horse. Explain. So when you get a horse to break it into like sounds and motion, like if you think of like the police horses, you see galloping down the street yeah, with like gotta. giant crowds of people. Like you can't just bring a normal ass horse oh, down the streets. It'll start fucking freak out and start kicking Broadway. people and like, yeah, it'll yeah. be a mess. So they break the horses in. So you do shit like um, fill like a giant metal trash bin with cans and roll it around the horse so that oh, it like it's what? used to the noise and like the commotion. So when it's in a crowd. Yeah. It doesn't freak the hell out. So, yeah, like, it's like uh, training a hunting dog. So, yeah. D- to so be Jerry not- Chastain was telling us that, yeah, they, they bring them into, like, in the house. They're ripping off shotgun Yeah, yeah. Shells. Just so they're not so scared get them of used the to, Yeah, yeah while yeah. they're eating and stuff like that. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so um, isolation, bad. So, But I, I can see how that makes sense because a lot of dogs, if they're fearful and anxious when you go out, you think they might kind of like jump at another dog mm-hmm. or a person. But at the same time, you have to emerge them into it or else it's going to get worse. They kind of right. go backwards. Right. Perfect. All right. Furthermore, significant differences between breeds were identified in the study. Spanish water dogs and Shetland sheep dogs express social fearfulness the most. While we, yeah, while Wheaton Terriers were amongst the bravest breeds. What's a wheat interior? We looked this Look up. Look that once. up. All right. The the Cairn, C-A-I-R-N. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Cairn Terrier and the Pembroke Welsh Corgi expressed only little fearfulness towards other dogs. So a, a uh, just sorry to interrupt you. A wheat interior, also known as oh. the Irish soft-coated wheat interior. It's like a large terrier that also has long hair and in the pictures we're looking at it typically covers their entire face i think that's just that how they they it looks like you have to trim these dogs up it looks like you have to get their hair cut all the time anchorman from anchorman it's like oh yeah it's anchorman's dog yeah the one that he dude everything just kicks off the bridge circle today he he throws a burrito at him out the window actually it looks nothing like that dog now it does but it's a bigger version of that with longer hair on its face okay kind of like greg's pubes i'll take it manscape all right differences between Differences between breeds support the notion that genes have an effect on fearfulness. Hmm. Duh. Uh, as well as many other mental health problems. Uh, this encourages us to carry out further research, especially in terms of heredity. Mm-hmm. All in all, this study provides us with tools to improve the welfare of our best friends. Diverse socialization in puppyhood and active lifestyle and careful 
carefully made breeding choices can significantly decrease social fearfulness. Lohi sums up. Sweet. The end. It makes sense, though. I mean, that oh, that's a good read, right? Yeah, that was, was kind of interesting. Story, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like, duh. The takeaway that but, I the takeaway I got from that is, you know, if you're one of those people who's kind of a shut in, and I know that's maybe not the most appropriate. Get a cat. <laughs> yeah, get a cat. Hell yes. Get that's a fucking cat. Get a cat. Don't have a dog. Shut yourself in your house. Fucking pet your couch and then pet your cat or whatever you do. Let it shit on the floor. Just kidding. Cats shit in your house. It's weird. Yeah. I don't like it. I don't like it either, man. But Bro, if you the the woman behind me, yeah, she's like a ninety year old. No, you're not 90. I'll give her like 80. A nine-year-old? She's an older woman, <laughs> and she's got like a, like four or five cats and just living in her garage. Mm-hmm. You know what we watch? I kind of like it because they eat all the mice. Well, they definitely help with mice. If you have outdoor cats, they'll f- We also have a them. fox now, dude. I know. I saw it on your- uh, On my GoPro camera. Not GoPro. No, my, your my uh, security camera. Your Brink camera, yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> those things, those things, dude, Did you fox- you Brink and- camera? Blink? What is it? You said Brink. Yeah, like what's the yours? Soul Skater. Oh, Brink? Yeah, we got a Blink. Okay, Blink camera. Uh, But also, I saw a video the other day. I follow this account on Instagram called Nature is Metal. If you don't follow it, follow it. It, It's very sad sometimes because it's like cougars in California jumping over 10-foot fences into people's houses and taking their dogs and dragging them back over the fence. But then it's also like lions attacking antelope, this kind of thing. But I saw... It's called life. It's life. It's called Mm -hmm. Nature is Metal. But I just recently saw uh, a fox... That was about the same size as this house cat goes in and snatches this house cat. It quiet as really hell. like oh yeah, dude, they're sneaking so quiet, fuckers. quieter than a cat. Sneaks in, snatches yeah. this thing. This cat's like scratching at it, tearing it up, and this fox does not give a crap, dude. Doesn't give a crap. Fox just snatches it, takes it out of the yard. Mm-hmm. So they're foxes animals. don't usually go after house pets. And like cats, it's like too much of a fight for them. Yeah, they can, if they're hungry enough, they'll they can like they'll feed off like field mice and like rodents and oh, stuff. I'm pretty like sure that. they just eat like trash and shit too. Oh, like raccoons. Like a, yeah, I'm pretty raccoons. sure they're just trash animals. Do you, do you think that raccoons? They're cool though. Evolutionarily, do you think raccoons' hands have become more like little tiny human hands mm-hmm. because they're like grabbing in trash and like just scavenging? Um, well, it depends. If you believe in science, then the answer is yes. If you believe the earth is only like 100 years old and <laughs> Jesus made everything, then the answer is no. Yeah. Okay. So, you know what? Greg, the earth's flat and I believe in the Bible. Sorry if we just lost some <laughs> listeners. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, listener account just dropped in. I half. think we have time for about one more story. Yeah. You can read yours. Mine's actually pretty relevant. Mine's a little bit longer, but, but I think it's relevant. It's so, Greg, let me ask you this before I start. When's the last time you have ate dog for dinner? Oh, never. Never. Have you? No, I haven't. Ah. But, but you know who does? Those folks in China. <laughs> you know what? They also have wet markets that breed coronavirus. Oh, okay. But luckily, for whatever reason... Is there a link? D- during this pandemic... <laughs> do, do we find... China has decided zero? to take dog off of the active edible list. Hey! hey, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, hey no more eating dogs, China. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no more dogs. No more dogs. All right. So China's government has called dogs now in quotation marks their companions, and <laughs> reportedly uh, signaled a wider ban on dog meat consumption uh, was ahead just weeks before the Yulin Dog Meat Festival. Yeah. Whoa. They're really working on their image. So okay, they're they're putting a ban and calling dogs companions, but they're still going to have this festival. It seems like they're just not Mm -hmm. going to have as many dogs. I don't know. All right. So the announcement today from China's ministry of agriculture and rural, the ministry of magic, rural affairs came as a final directory of genetic resources of livestock and poultry was published and omitted dogs from the long list of animals allowed to be commercially bred, raised and traded for consumption. Mm. Jeez, that was a long sentence. That was a paragraph of a sentence. A government spokesperson said that the majority of people who took part in a public um, consultation process opposed including dogs as livestock, adding that dogs have long been domesticated as companions and pets who guard the family home, act as search and rescue animals for police, and assist those with visual impairments. So that's one government uh, spokesman who's trying to get reelected, but it's probably going to get killed in the process because he's going against. Yeah, the brain. something tells me that there's just like one super old guy who just dog meat is like his favorite, and he just kept this 
like going for oh, like yeah. Some centuries, dude. He's like filed his teeth He's like down a little bit. Three hundred fucking years old. Oh yeah, he looks like he looks like the last Airbender with filed down teeth and eats dogs and he's Chinese. Yeah, I was thinking like Not an sure old China man in like a fucking opium d- opium den. <laughs> oh, just r- yeah. ripping crate and dodgeball. <laughs> Sorry, my jokes aren't original. I don't care. <laughs> that was a good reference, though. Yeah, dude, I told you. Watch I'm all dodgeball. About it. That's how it was created. Yeah. <laughs> ESPN ate the Ocho. All right. The spokes- Frickin' A. Scott. <laughs> the spokesperson said that with the changing times, some traditional customs about dogs will change too. He added that more policies regarding dogs would follow, but did not elaborate. The Daily Mail reported. The announcement is in line with draft guidelines drawn up by China in April to reclassify dogs as pets rather than livestock. So we're still kind of going on the same path here. The decision comes ahead of the Yulin Dog Meat Festival that we discuss next month, where thousands of dogs are butchered, skinned, and cooked with blow torches. So they're just roasting the hair off in public in a festival. They're probably playing some Chinese EDM in the background and then just eating dog legs. Okay, that was kind of racist. No, no, but yeah, I get that's what I would I'm imagine the their picture. EDM sounds like. Just uh, in the picture. It is scheduled to run for nine days from uh, the 21st of June in the city located in Shongche Province. Province? Yeah, that's what was I said. that the word you're, you're trying to fucking say? Said, bro. Why'd you say it all racist? The, well, I was trying to pronounce Shang. You're painting a picture. Shang Shang. Shang Shang. Storytelling. Shang Shang. That's how you pronounce it. Yeah. Uh, Humane Society International estimates that 10 million dogs are slaughtered in China annually. And said that many are stolen from homes and taken mm. off the streets ahead of the Yulin Festival. So, I, you know, I have kind of a mixed perspective on this because if w- we euthanize dogs like crazy in the United States, Truth. you know what I mean? Probably close to those numbers. Especially if dogs over seven years old, seven, eight, nine years old, hasn't been adopted yet. It, there's certain, you go through one, two, three, four adoptions, and if it doesn't get adopted, you euthanize the thing. So, in my mind, as long as the dog's healthy enough to be eaten, I'd rather eat it in that situation. Oh, waste less. It's less waste. We can utilize it. But at the same time, there's a stigma to it because we live in the United States. We'll fucking eat the shit out of chickens, cows, lambs. I mean, we'll, we'll literally take a lamb or a, or a calf straight out of a cow's ass and eat it. Veal, are you kidding me? Right. The, the Family Guy is one of the best episodes ever. They're literally cow shit in the veal out down a slide like it shoots and ladders that kids game we played oh, and then it goes through a meat grinder onto your plate we do that in the united Delicious. states but you know we're euthanizing dogs like crazy so i could see maybe we could do that i mean i don't like waste but i don't know how i feel about eating a dog i it feels weird it i feels don't weird. think i, I would agree. do that i agree man. ever all right the world health organization has warned that dog trade spreads rabies and increases the risk of cholera Cholera. Cholera. Yeah. A 2017 uh, survey revealed that in Yulin, nearly three quarters of people do not regularly eat dog dog meat, despite efforts by traders to promote it. So it's promoted heavily, but not everybody eats it. It depends. But again, in China, you shit on the street and you do whatever you want, depending on where you are. A 2016 nationwide survey found that 64% of Chinese citizens wanted the Yulin Festival shut down and 69.5% have never eaten dog meat. All right. So that's a good, though. That's a high number. Dr. Peter Lee. I mean, it's a little bit higher than half. So in the United States, that's 160 million people would be eating dog. All right, it's a so, lot of people. <laughs> it's a lot, man. There's more people in China. Uh, Dr. Peter Lee, HSI's China policy specialist, said that the Yulin Festival is a bloody spectacle. It does not reflect the mood or eating habits of the majority of Chinese, mm-hmm. uh, majority of Chinese people. I had Chinese last night for dinner. I hope there wasn't dog in there, man. He said, now that the Chinese government has officially recognized dog as companions and not livestock, we're hopeful that, that China will take stronger steps to hasten the end of the dog and the cat meat trade for which mm. millions of animals continue to suffer each year. In quotes. Which are they going to have a dog overpopulation problem? <laughs> I don't think so, Greg. <laughs> I think they're eating them all, man. They're just still eating them? I think they're eating them. And then if they're not eating them, they're drowning them. Or something. Oh, yeah. dude, I don't like. I know this it's story. dark. It's dark, man. We don't live in China. There's a reason. We weren't born there. That's why we don't live there. <laughs> oh God. The announcement. I guess it's all relative, you know, to what you're, it is. you're it is. born into and you're used to. One hundred percent, man. Right. 
All right, so I'm almost done here. This is a long story, but in quotes, the announcement we presents do? cities across China with a perfect opportunity opportunity to act upon the government's words by protecting dogs and cats from the meat trade thieves and thoughter, <laughs> thoughter houses. <laughs> thoughter house? The thoughter house. Just kill all those Instagram thoughts. <laughs> Throw them in the thoughter house. <laughs> straight in the thoughter house over there. Straight in the thoughter house. <laughs> Oh lord! That was a great slip of we the are tongue. So great dumb. slip of the tongue. <laughs> China's Ministry of Agriculture saved this one from the thotter house. <laughs> oh man! If you're showing your butt and you have a little bit of your areola slipping out and you have a million followers, go to the th- thotter house. <laughs> Straight to the thotter Thinking house. Thotter house. Oh man! All right. So <laughs> in April, the cities of Shenzhen and Zhuhe were the first in China to officially ban the consumption of cat and dog meat. The finalized livestock list did officially declare a number of wild wild animals as livestock, including several deer species, okay, venison, alpaca, guinea fowl, and the three most commonly farmed wild species. guinea fowl? I have no idea. Um, I would imagine some sort of like pig rodent, like (laughs) guinea pig rodent bird. Fowl. Fowl's a bird, you dumbass. (laughs) Bird, uh, pig bird? (laughs) <laughs> uh, so for the fur trade raccoon dog silver fox and mink are are trying they're trying to get that out oh dude it is like the weirdest looking bird you've ever it's, imagined it's, it's all right so it does, looks like does a, it have an oinker it look, on its face can bro? you oh, can you see it it kind of looks like a mix between a turkey and like a miniature peacock and a pe- yeah small peacock or um oh, what's the what's the it doesn't have the, the goo uh, gobbler though. The what's the, the the small bird that that you hunt? Quail. Quail. Kind of looks like a mix yeah. between a turkey, a quail, and a peacock without a like, big bloomy tail. It doesn't have tail. the like ninety year old ball sack. It doesn't look it, like though. it would be very good to eat though. But yeah, who knows? It's better than dog, I guess. All right. So to wrap this up, last week's authorities in Wuhan officially banned the eating of all wild animals and said the city Woo! would become a wildlife sanctuary. Currently, the ban lasts for five years. So in five years, you know, on paper, they're not eating them, but they're still eating dogs. That's pretty good, right? This is a publicity event. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is is all fabricated. Publicity. Yeah. But um, that's it. So. But um. 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 I feel bad for naming that guy's wife Goro because of (laughs) Goro. I I hope she just looks like a. Names. Seven foot tall forearm person. Names are all done. All right. So, guys, we love you. Uh, follow us everywhere at Barkology Podcast. Greg, the Bark, um, the Dog the bark Pack. King right here. <laughs> the, you're the Bark King. The Bark King. But the Dog Pack mini vlogs on YouTube. Check them out. Subscribe. Like it. Love you guys. Follow us everywhere. And Greg, wag more. Bark last, baby. Boop, 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 boop. Oh.